What's up guys, Jasper Chase here and I am back. That's right guys, I am back. Got a new bike, got some GoPros, new location, mountain roads. Life is good, ladies and gentlemen, life is good. So where have I been? Well, to explain that, I gotta start from the beginning. So it all started in 2003 when I bought a Suzuki GS500F. I threw a little camera in my helmet, and my motor vlogging career began. Well, I drove that thing in what, three different states, in California, Texas, even South Carolina. I was in Charleston, and uh, I was so stupid. I did, uh, I did a rolling burnout in front of my neighborhood. I dumped the clutch on accident in the middle of the burnout, and uh, it, it shot off and went right into a ditch, and the front wheel sunk into the mud, and I couldn't, couldn't get it out. So I ended up going back to my house, grabbed my roommates, and they all helped me dig it out of the mud and I drove it home. So that was my first wreck, if you will, quote unquote. And uh, fortunately everything was fine with it. So I moved on. Well, I ended up selling that and I bought a, I upgraded to a ZX6R, Kawasaki. Beautiful bike, red, bought it off Craigslist and I didn't even have it for seven hours and I crashed it. Yep, seven hours and I totaled it. So I'm sitting at my house and mind you, that is a very important part of the story. I was at my house. I was sitting there with my buddy drinking Gentleman's Jack watching Family Guy and I woke up in the hospital. That was it. I don't remember anything other than that. Now the way that the, the story's been pieced together is I got drunk, I blacked out, I went to the Hess station, the gas station, to grab a, a sub because they found a sandwich in my hoodie. Now mind you, I wasn't wearing any gear, no helmet, uh, no jacket, no boots, no gloves, nothing. I was just wearing a hoodie and jeans. And apparently, after I bought the sandwich, I must have missed my turn to the neighborhood because I ended up in a neighborhood that was actually synonymous with drugs. Uh, I found that out by the cop. I was in a really bad neighborhood. And I guess what happened was I, all right, so I missed my turn. I turned into this neighborhood. Then I must have fallen asleep because I kept go the road turned and I kept going forward. So I hit this, all right, so when you have a, a house that has a ditch, in the yard there's a concrete culvert it's called a culvert that goes underneath the driveway well i hit that and the cops said i was doing about 45 and i flipped over the handlebars and then uh tried to crawl back to my bike there were witnesses that said i kept trying to crawl crawl out of the ditch and it, it was a big mess they were telling me not to move and all that stuff so now i'm at the hospital i'm awake and i'm talking to a police officer and all of a sudden, I just tell him, it's like, I have no idea where I'm at. I, I don't know what happened. And he explained the whole story to me. And I kept asking him, how's my bike? How, what is the bike's condition? Like, you know, I, I just wanted to get out of there and go ride. Well, the bike was totaled. Nothing I could do about it. And apparently when I flipped over the handlebars, I uh, strained my groin and I rolled my ankle, I, I sprained my ankle basically. So, they put me on, they bandaged me up, they put me on crutches and they sent me on my way. The, the nurses really were not happy with me and didn't want to treat me because I was in essence a drunk driver. Fortunately, I did not get a ticket, I didn't damage anybody's property, the culvert didn't get damaged, it was just me. So, that was, that was a good thing. I'm really glad I didn't get a DUI. It turns out, I did not sprain my ankle. I actually broke it. I shattered it. I was on crutches for six months and I talked to a friend of mine. He's also a motovlogger. His name was Ninja 1400 Rider. And 
he's the doctor and we were in New Orleans he took me to his hospital and did an x-ray on my sprained ankle and he saw these they were calcified lines in my bone which determined he determined that the bone was shattered so the nurses just didn't care they didn't care that I had broken my ankle they just said oh it's a sprain we'll wrap it and give him some crutches and they shoved me out the door which was terrible so I was on crutches for six months and it was agony oh my gosh it was so painful but I didn't know any better until I talked to my doctor friend and he told me what was up so long story short I was at my house drinking Jack Daniels I blacked out and had a wreck now I just want to stress that I was at my house I didn't go to a bar and proceed to try and drive home I didn't do any of that I, I just it was just a freak unfortunate accident that I got drunk and got on the bike I didn't know so just keep that in mind I do not endorse uh, drunk driving at all I think it's stupid there's way too much risk it's just not good uh, for anyone that's watching don't drink and drive it's a terrible thing that happened to you so a few years later I bought a Suzuki SV650 it was a really cool bike I really like that bike and I don't know I probably had it for maybe a year and a half and I was heading to a buddy's house with my my friend he was on a bike behind me we got we got on the the on-ramp to the turnpike and it, it's it's a it's a really complicated turn where it turns to the left and then it turns back to the right and then you go through the toll booth and then you turn again and you get get on the turnpike well that first turn is two lanes but then it goes to one lane and I didn't see the sign it was dark and so I'm on in the right lane there's a semi truck in the left lane and I'm passing the semi truck and all of a sudden I don't have any more road so it was either hit the truck or go to the right now unfortunately for me going to the right meant that I had to go down a cliff and it was probably I mean not a cliff cliff but it it was a really steep incline and it dropped about 30 or 40 feet so I ended up flying off the road down into the the ditch if you will and crashed uh, pretty bad pretty bad crash actually fortunately I did not get hurt I was wearing all my gear and the only thing that happened to the bike was that the handlebar on the right side got bent nothing else it was totally fine fortunately the SV650 didn't have fairings so it didn't crack or break anything it was awesome I, I'm so I got so lucky with that one so two years later I sold that bike and then I bought a Suzuki GSX-R600 red had an exhaust on it looked good sounded good it was an amazing bike i loved it while i was living in orlando at the time i was on the side road next to the highway at a traffic light now the light turns green and i start to go at a normal pace i wasn't trying to speed or anything i hadn't even gotten to the speed limit and then i had a pothole about 30 miles an hour the front wheel hit it it bucked me off the bike i slid to a stop uh the bike didn't have too much damage on it it just kind of laid on its side and slid I got up I went to grab my motorcycle and this family uh, from Australia actually they were right behind me and came out to rescue me if you will and they, they started talking to me and I'm like I'm like oh I'm good I'm all right I just need to get back on my bike and head home no big deal whatever and they were like they're like you need to relax I think you're in shock turns out the mom is a nurse so she was able to treat me for shock she kept trying to explain to me it's like you're hurt you, you don't need to be walking around and I looked down my uh, leg was had road rash on it my ankle had road rash on it both my arms had road rash and of course I was not wearing a jacket and I was wearing slacks uh, my a business attire for work I was wearing a helmet now let me tell you about that helmet right here on the cheek right at this spot had a huge gash in it and that was because I hit a road reflector 
when I face planted into the road. Now, if I had not been wearing a helmet, that road reflector would have ripped the whole side of my face off and my life would be ruined. So, for all of you out there watching this video, always wear your gear at GAT. All the gear, all the time. Dress for the crash, not for the ride. And that's what you have to do in order to stay safe. And I'm glad that I have my helmet on. Now, granted, I wish I had my jacket on, but I didn't. It is what it is. So I learned from that. But anyway, so I was sitting down and the, 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 the kids were talking to me and trying to keep me, my mind, trying to keep my mind occupied so that I could get over the shock. So then the ambulance and the firefighters get there. The firefighters actually picked the bike up out of the road and parked it in a church parking lot for me. Which is really nice though, they didn't have to do that. I get in the ambulance, they take me to the hospital, and this is this had not been my first rodeo with road rash. They uh, grab their gauze and everything, and wh whatever they use to scrape it out, and they're like, all right, we gotta scrape all the asphalt out of your wounds. <laughs> I looked at them and I was like, do what you gotta do. <laughs> and they did, and it hurt. It hurt bad. But they cleaned me up, they bandaged me up, and I got sent on my way. Uh, picked up the bike the next day. It still ran. Everything was fine with it. Uh, just, the fairings were a little scratched. The uh, oh, the foot peg, not the foot peg. What do you call that thing? Uh, your frame slider. The frame slider was scratched up. I had to get new frame sliders. But overall, the bike really wasn't in that bad of shape. And the coup de gras, the one, the only, ladies and gentlemen, 2012 Yamaha R1 named Chelsea loved that bike it was my dream bike what an incredible bike that was i truly truly missed that bike now granted i love this bike and you're going to see a review on it so stay tuned for that but that r1 was amazing so i'm heading to a buddy's house and i'm with oi dirk it's at night we're on a small two-lane road, and I decide to try a wheelie. Now, Oi Dirk's behind me, and we were hooked up on Cena's so we could hear and talk to each other. And unfortunately, I clutched it too. Well, the first wheelie I tried sucked. I clutched it up, and I rode it for like 50 feet. It was a crappy wheelie. So I clutched it even harder the next time and and the bike looped uh, it happened so fast I couldn't even get my foot on the rear brake to to put it back down it, it, it was just lightning fast before I know it I pushed the bike away now I'm sliding I was doing about 70 miles an hour I was sliding and I, I was just watching my bike again this is all within like like three to five seconds I was sliding, I was watching my bike flip and tumble, and all of a sudden my, my butt started hurting really bad, and I was like, oh, I'm getting road rash on my butt. So I leaned back on my jacket, but forgot that I had a backpack on. So when that happened, I started tumbling and rolling, and I smashed my wrist into the ground and ended up getting surgery on it. I'll throw some pictures up here. They ended up throwing a titanium plate in there with a couple pins and bandaged me back together, so that worked. But the worst pain was the road rash on my left butt cheek. So the dust settled, the bike is wrecked. My buddy Ordurks helped me off the ground. We pick up the bike, put the kickstand down. I've got blood everywhere. I've got a broken wrist. And there are cars piled up and they're not even helping. They're just sitting in their cars watching all of this unfold. It was ridiculous. Nobody came out to help. Well, the fire truck got there, the ambulance got there, they put me on a gurney, and <laughs> unfortunately, the shock wore off and the pain hit. And my left butt cheek was screaming in pain. My wrist screaming in pain. It was awful. And <laughs> I didn't mean to, but the shock wore off and I ended up throwing up all over a paramedic. I mean, just like projectile vomiting. 
it, it, I felt so bad for that lady. Oh, so I apologized, and she's like, it's fine, it happens, and I'm like, oh. So they ended up taking me to the hospital. Uh, they got me cleaned up. They scraped all the crap out of my butt cheek. And let me tell you, that was the most painful thing I've ever gone through in my life. Not the broken wrist, but the road rash that I got on my left butt cheek. It lasted for about two and a half months where pure agony. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot tell you or explain to you in words how unbelievably painful that was. Never experienced anything like that in my life. So that was it. That's the end of the Chase Jasper Down YouTube channel. Until now. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. I have a 2022 Aprilia RS 660. I've got two GoPros and I am back. So excited to be back. I've got all kinds of incredible videos coming. I'm up here in North Carolina in the Smoky Mountains. So you can see the creek right there. All kinds of great views. I'm hitting up Way Out Bald, Brass Town Bald, Amicaloa Falls. Uh, the Dragon's Tail is only an hour away from me. So I got some great videos for you guys. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. It helps with the algorithm so that I can get some more subscribers. I'm trying to get to 10,000 by July. I've got about 3,400 right now. So I think it's doable. I think it's possible. But I need your help. So stay tuned for all that, guys. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. You guys keep doing what you're doing. I'm out.